say. All right. So the assignment that we did yesterday, for yeah. your multiplying, some of them had you multiplying a binomial times a trinomial. Some of them had you foiling, but it was more complicated. Uh, 31 through 34, 36 through 41. Any questions on that? I'll do the two tomorrow. Francis. Well, well, what happened? 30 or 30. Oh. Okay, 34. I went home. I ate a plate of food in my bed and then I fell asleep. I got home. I was so tired. I attempted to do my homework on the 34. Day so we're going to do this in the uh, elementary school multiplication format, which, as a side note, Graham, I will tell you that there is someone in class that was struggling a little bit with the foiling with the, this stuff here, x minus 7 whoops, times x plus 2. And that person decided to do it the same way that we were doing these yesterday and totally nailed it. Yeah, so if this foiling thing is uh, confusing for you, you can take these and write them in this format too, and that will also work. So you go 2 times negative 7, 2 times x x times negative 7, x times x, and then add them up and it works out, okay? So that way will also work for those. All right, so 34, we're definitely going to do it that way. Which goes on top, the 2g plus 7 or the 3g squared minus 5g plus 2? The second one, yeah. The second one. And so that means the 2g plus 7 goes on the bottom. So just like in the old elementary school days, you're going to start with this number right here and multiply it by this one, Jolina, and then we're going to work our way backwards. So we're going to go 7 times 2, then 7 times negative 5g, then 7 times 3g squared. Okay? What we worked on yesterday, Jolina, was pretend that this is a problem just like this. If you're going to do 352 times 17, what two numbers do you multiply together first? In this in this problem right here, what what did you what would you do first? Right, and so I'm going to do the same thing with this over here. I'm going to multiply the seven through everything. Okay, so seven times two is 14. Is that going to be a positive 14 or a negative 14? positive. 7 times negative 5g is negative 35g and 7 times 3g squared is 21g squared. Okay, so before I move on to the next thing, any questions on that? No. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing but I'm going to do the 2g instead. Okay, so 2g times 2 is 4g. Now where do I write that 4g? Under the negative 35g. And that's going to be a positive 4g. Then 2g times negative 5g is negative 10g squared. And that goes underneath the other g squared that I already have. And then 7 times 3g squared is? 2 times 3g squared. Oh, I'm sorry, I misspoke. 2g times 3g squared is? 6g. 6g cubed. Okay, why are you confused? You're answering every question I'm asking correctly. I'm really No. But you're sort of doing it also. Where did I lose it? Talk to me. Uh, because I went 2g times negative 5g. I add the exponents, yeah. So g to the first times g to the first is g to the second. Okay? Good now? Alright, and then I just have to add everything up. So 14, negative 35g plus 4g is? Negative 31g. 21g squared minus 10g squared is? 11g squared, and then I have uh, 6g cubed on the end. That's it? 
Okay, anything else? Okay, 36, I'm going to do two different ways. I'm going to foil it, and then I'm going to do the uh, up-down multiplication thing, okay? So let's foil it first. No, you, either one of these ways will work, okay? So you can close your ears now until I get this. Okay, um, so the first term times the first term is x cubed. Good, and the reason for that is exactly what Jolina and I were just talking about. What do you do when you multiply? What do you do with the exponents? You add them. And so since I had uh, x squared times x, 2 plus 1 makes 3, so it's x cubed. Then I need to do the outside one. So x squared times negative 3 is negative 3x squared. Then I need to do the inside ones. That gives me x. And then I do the last thing in each parenthesis, and 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Okay? Now, what do you notice that's a little different about that answer than the other ones that we've gotten before? It's already in... It's already in standard form, simplest form. Yeah, this is a cubed. There's no other cubes. Then we've got a squared, and then an x, and then a negative 3. So there's no simplifying, no combining like terms to be done. That's our final answer. All right. Good. All right. Now, like I said, the other way that you can do this is just the way we did that last one. You can put them uh, on top of each other and do the same way. So the first thing that I would do is I'm going to multiply the negative 3 by both of these things. So negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. And then negative 3 times x squared is negative 3x squared. Okay. Here's the little tricky part. Now if I go over to the x and run that through, x times 1 is what? 1x. Where should I put that? Yeah, there's no other x here, so it's going to have to start its very own column over there. Okay? And then when I do x times x squared, I get x cubed. Where does that go? In front of the x. So I'm going to have the x cubed over here because there's no like terms for me. But either one of those gives you the same answer. Okay? All right? Really? Well, because if I put this x underneath the x squared, that would make me think that maybe I could combine those two, but I can't. Because this is a squared and that's just an x, so they don't go together. Okay? All right, anything else? No. Solid. Okay, trade them up. Oh.